and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, one of the civic partners for this show. Today, my guest is Laurel Brault, who's in the studio today to talk to us about the Potsdam Snack Pack program. Laurel, thank you so much for coming in. It's, uh, it's great to have you here. The Snack Pack program that I've heard about is a wonderful wonderful community effort to meet a need amongst the school children in our community. So um, before we get started, give us a little bit of background about you and how you came to the North Country. Your story is so fascinating. <laughs> okay, well thank you Donna for allowing me to have this opportunity to talk about the program. I retired military, served 36 years, and when I when I retired in 2011, my husband and I, we didn't exactly know where we wanted to settle. So we lived in Washington State for a couple of years and then we decided to get on the road again and look for another place to live. And we both had family on the East Coast. I'm originally from the Bahamas. My husband's from a town outside of Montreal. So we thought East Coast and we just headed uh, GPS and started heading <laughs> this direction. So we got here in 2013 and we moved uh, to Norwood, New York. Never heard of, of the community before, but we really like it. and. We enjoy the fact that there's a real sense of community here. And as we had been uh, living there, you know, it took a while for me to get used to being in a rural community, having lived overseas for so many years. And I realized as I was donating to the Norwood uh, Snapback program, in conversation with a, a young woman, she told me that Potsdam didn't have a program. So that's kind of how I got involved with the Snapback slash backpack program, as some people call it. But really, we did not have a plan when we moved here in 2013. It was really, we were trying to get closer to family. And we found this beautiful area, Potsdam, Canton, Norwood, Norfolk, and we're happy to be here. Well, that's wonderful. So your husband is used to the winters, and you're learning to get used I'm to them. I'm learning. I've, I've been learning for a long time. <laughs> so, no, I'm not a fan of the cold weather, and that's probably why it took me so long to get involved in the community. Uh, 2013 was probably one of the worst winters people had seen in a while and I, I basically just stayed indoors, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable driving and things like that. But anyway, you know, I got used to it and um, probably around 2014 was when I started venturing out, mm -hmm. you know, looking at what's going on in the community, how can I get involved. Oh, that's great. So the Snack Pack program, uh, otherwise known as the Backpack program, it has been around for about 15 years now nationally. Um, 22 million children receive free or reduced lunches through the National School Lunch Program and the National Breakfast Program. And school communities started the Backpack or the Snack Pack Program as a supplement to that program because they knew they were, there were students who were in need on school vacations and over the weekend when there might not be enough food at home. Yes. And education requires more than just textbooks and teachers. And if you're a student from a low income household or someone who is in some kind of distress at home, sometimes uh, coming to school chronically hungry is the worst thing for uh, trying to be ready to learn in the school day. So the Snack Pack Backpack program was created to help meet some of those needs. Yes. So you told us a little bit about how you got, uh, you, you noticed that there wasn't a program in Potsdam and um, that you decided to do something about that. Describe for us a little bit about what that process in, in, involved in terms of getting permission from the schools and getting, getting the, everything in place yes. to make it start. Yes. So what I did was I reached out to the school council at the time, at the time it was Sue Pike at the elementary school and it turns out turned out at the time that she was about to move on to the high school and take on a different role and also there was a new principal coming in so it took a while you know just to line everything up but in August of last year was when I finally had a chance to sit down with the principal Jennifer Gray and explained everything about the program and a very wise man told me that if you're going to pitch something if you're a salesperson what you want to do is when you when you go in to see that customer, you want to have everything set so that all they have to do is say yes. So when I met with Jennifer, I was able to provide her with the information, the background information about what we wanted to do, uh, an example of what the permission slip would look like, because we wanted to ensure that 
for the students who were going to be receiving the snack packs that their parents or the guardian had approved their, their enrollment in the program, and also we were aware of any food allergies that the child might have. So once we got all that set, then the superintendent, Jennifer, went back to the superintendent and was able to get her approval for us to move ahead with the program. My next uh, task was to basically get this sponsored because I had started just purchasing food and just storing it in our extra room at home. And I did that believing that someone was going to say, this is a good idea and we want to get this program started. It was a little difficult at first because I didn't really know anyone and you're making f cold phone calls, basically introducing yourself every time. And it took a while, but as I said, once I was able to meet with Jennifer, get, get the school superintendent's approval, I then went to my local church, New Hope Community Church, and I said, this is something that I think we should do. And uh, I also thought, well, maybe if I could get a, a community service organization. So I went to the Lions Club and said, well, would you be interested if my church agrees? Would you sort of help with this? And they agreed to do that. So with the two groups working together, we were able to have a food drive that was sponsored by the Lions Club. And that was in the initial like big community thing that occurred. Uh, we were able to bring in, I think it was just over $1,000 in cash donation and lots of uh, food items were donated. So then we were able to actually, you know, really make a huge push in terms of the number of students that we could enroll. So on the 4th of November of last year, that was the day we officially started providing the snack packs. And at that time, we only had 40 students enrolled in the program. But from November to the end of January, we went from 40 students to 116 students. So that demonstrates that not only was there a need, but the need is probably still growing because as you started out the program, you had limits about what you could do, right? Did you yes. set a you set a maximum number, correct? Yes. Well, you know, the thing is, you have to look at how much money do you have on right. hand to be able to con to sustain the program. And initially, as I said, based on what I had procured prior to getting help from the community, I knew I could probably last for about two months. <laughs> so that wasn't a very long time. So I really needed to get the additional help. And of course, the, the staff at the school, the elementary school also, were very supportive. The teachers, they have a day where they can wear civil, I say civilian clothes. That's my military not, speed not coming out. Not <laughs> I saw you, so I was wearing a uniform for 36 years, so it's hard to uh, get you to the civilian lingo. But yeah, so they were able to pay a certain amount to be able to dress down. Mm -hmm. And so they were contributing either a food item or five dollars I believe was the amount. So everything that the community did in the beginning really helped to uh, jumpstart the program and that helped us in our effort to get approval to join the Food Bank of Central New York which was like the next step for us. Well I, I want to say that um, last fall we did an interview with Joanne Chambers who's the superintendent of schools yeah. in Potsdam and Jennifer Gray who was the brand new okay. elementary uh, principal and Jennifer is a I, I actually uh, grew up in the Potsdam area and went to Potsdam schools so she herself was very familiar with the community and I think very familiar with the need not only from her professional background as a teacher and now as a principal but just understanding what the needs are in rural places like like St. Lawrence County so what you have described is all of the pieces fell into place more or less seamlessly and to me that's always an indication that you're doing the right thing because there didn't seem to be a lot of big hurdles that you had to overcome. Everybody seemed very supportive yes. and ready to say yes. So, yes. so good for you for asking and being <laughs> ready to ask and being that great saleswoman with all of your material. So um, Laurel, talk a little bit about how the program works. How are children identified and how, are, how is their anonymity protected so that no one knows in the classroom that someone is getting um, these snack packs? Yes, and that was a, an important thing for us. So the way the program works is that the letter goes home, the teachers identify the students. We, we know we have more children who are eligible to receive free or reduced lunch, but again, we have to keep in mind just how much money we have on hand and how long we can sustain the program based on the number of students in Rome. So the teachers identified the students most in need, and we were able to send the permission slips home, got that back, and then 
once we did that, we were able to then identify, okay, for Teacher Smith, for example, six students in that particular classroom were eligible or were enrolled in the program. Uh, Teacher Jones may have had ten students. So the volunteers, when they come to prepare the snacks, all they see is a list, and it just has the name of the teacher, and there's a number beside it. So that's mm -hmm. all they know. And the packed snacks are prepared in individual plastic bags of plastic. The, right now we're using the resealable bags, Zip like the one bags, gallon right. Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. So those go inside of another big bag with the name of the teacher and the number. And then the school counselors are usually the ones who ensure that they're distributed to the students. For example, at the elementary school, the school counselor there, what he does is he takes all of the bags, he places them at the door of the, for the particular teacher, of the particular teacher, then that teacher is responsible at some point during the day to discreetly put the snack pack inside of the student's bag. Okay. So everything is done prior to the student's arrival. The, the bags are placed at the, the door of that particular classroom. The teacher gets it before the students show up and then at some point during the morning they will discreetly put it inside the student's backpack. I believe at the high school what they do is it's kept in a certain room mm -hmm. and students that are enrolled uh, know they can go to that room and pick up their snack pack. Okay, and you've actually brought a snack pack with you so we can see a little bit about the kinds of things that you're able to include and uh, what there might be um, but there might be in terms of uh, when you get ready to take, we'll ask for donations later on, but yes. these are the kinds of yes. things that you will you accept. And I love the fact that you have um, asked every, each family to identify whether or not that child has a food allergy and that you are able to meet that particular need because that is such a, a health and safety issue for kids who have some kinds of allergies. They need You need to know that. Yes. We actually, the three, I think it's three bears, the gluten-free place mm -hmm. here in town, the owners approached us and said that they would prepare snacks for any student identified as gluten-free. And so what we, we haven't had any students yet, but they said they would do the entire bag. Oh, okay, so great. Sure so, right, and again, that's the community, community meeting, time. stepping up to meet the yes. need. It's just wonderful. It, it's, it's fantastic. So we normally try to provide a minimum of eight items, okay. and, and it varies. Uh, every program does it uh, in a little different way, but we try to provide at least eight items. So we, we might have, we always have juice, mm -hmm. we always have cereal, and we usually have granola bars every week. So it varies. We could have applesauce, we have fresh fruit, we have breakfast bars, we use the Chef Boyardee meals, mm -hmm. the, the microwavable ones, uh, dried fruit or nuts, uh, fruit cups, granola bars, hot chocolate, uh, oatmeal. Uh, so for the most part, juice. students can so. actually prepare this themselves. It's not like they have to have help to, to eat a lot of this or prepare this food in order to for eat, most, right? For most right. of the items. So. In this particular bag, you know, we've got the juice, we have the applesauce. We always put like some kind of cookie. It could be Lorna Dune, it could be, you know, the, the graham crackers. But we always try to have some type of cookie in there. We want to give them a treat. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, granola bars, as I said, we, we have cereal. Uh, one thing I was able to start purchasing now that we're affiliated with the Food Bank of Central New York is a uh, can of tuna fish. Okay. So this could even last Good uh, protein. for right. the entire weekend. Right. And we have nuts, in this case almonds, mm -hmm. and we have cereal and the breakfast bar. So this is an example of what might be in a particular snack pack. Okay. We do try to vary the menu so that they're not getting the exact same items each week. And I try to prepare the menu three weeks at a time so I'll, that helps me to see, okay, last week they received nuts. Well, they might get um, the individual small popcorn bags. So every time we, we try to mix it up just a little bit to vary, as I said, the items that they're getting. Just right. Like. Now, Laurel, tell us a little bit. You have a crew of volunteers who actually assemble these each week and then get them in the school. The, the snack packs are distributed on Friday, is that correct? Yes. The, yes. the counselors pick them up on Thursday, okay. so that way Friday they morning be, okay. they're all ready to, to go and make sure they get in the students' bags. So where do your volunteers meet to put these together um, and prepare the bags for yeah. the counselors? 
So New Hope Community Church actually gave us a room. They donated one of their classrooms that was converted into a right. It basically looks like a little store. And we have the shelves all lined and all of the products are, are on the shelves. And the volunteers come in, if it's a regular uh, school week, they come in on Thursday mornings to prepare, uh, prepare the snack packs at 9 a.m. If it's a short week, then we will adjust accordingly. Sure. So they come in, and as I said, they don't know the names of the students. They, all they do is, we have, I usually have the menu laid out, and each volunteer, when they arrive, they look and see, okay, cereal for today. Uh, we're doing juice, we're doing, you know, the Chef Boyardee. And each volunteer is responsible for identifying the item that they're going to pull from the shelf, because they're responsible for counting out in this case, we're, we're now providing snacks for 152 students, mm -hmm. so that they're responsible for pulling, you know, 152 cereal boxes off of the shelves. Right. And once they do that, we basically form an assembly line, so all the food mm -hmm. is laid out and the volunteers are on either side of the table. And we just go around and, you know, they'll pack two or three items each person, and then we usually have one or two people at the end who will be responsible for the tying the bags or using the ziplocs and we put those in a bin and then at the end as I said uh, we use the bags for the teachers to then say okay six bags for Jones, ten mm -hmm. bags for Smith right. and that's also our QA check to make sure that we prepared enough snack packs because sometimes when you're counting and especially if you start talking Instead of 152, you might have picked up 149. And I'm guessing that this is a, a wonderful social opportunity for the volunteers as well. Yes, just but, to you know, over time we have learned, don't talk to anyone <laughs> during the counting stage. We can socialize once the assembly line starts, but we have learned now, and actually they tell each other, <laughs> you know, I'm counting. <laughs> so we've learned uh, to do that. That's great. So, um... Let's talk about the all-important funding for the program and yes. where the food comes from because um, all the goodwill in the world isn't quite enough to make something like this happen. You've got to have money and you've got to have supplies. So yes. where, where, um, where are you getting your donations from and where is your budget being formulated? So I, I have to give a shout out to the Jazz Asides group that I work out with Monday, Wednesday, Fridays and Saturdays, 9 a.m. Those ladies just came through. When I first told them what I was doing, they just walked up to me and said, here Laurel, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. I mean, these ladies were fantastic. You know, I, I, I received my first food donation from a woman. She brought, she went to BJ's and bought a bunch of stuff and said, here you go. Mm -hmm. And so it was really wonderful. Those, those ladies were behind me from the very beginning. And as I said, it was you know, it's just really small donations at first, but once we got that started, as I said, and we were able to build up a little bit of inventory, we were able to get assistance, as I said, the Lions Club, they did the food drive, then Gardshear hosted a food drive, Martin Luther King weekend. That Monday, we had a, a very successful food drive that where people were able to bring the donations to the church. And then uh, Morgan Stanley, as a matter of fact, I picked up a donation from them this morning. So pretty much every quarter they've been reaching out to me saying, well, what do you need? So I gave them a list of what we would need for this quarter. And this morning I went and I picked up the stuff and loaded it in the back of my trunk. And, you know, so I'll be taking that to the church after I leave here. But, you know, having the community help like that. And sometimes uh, the stores will contact me and say, we have items that we're pulling off the shelves. And so we just have to be mindful because we try to make sure and, and stage things based on the expiration dates. Sure. So if, if a store calls and says we have some items, then that moves to the front of the list in terms of what mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. going to give out. And, and if we have to move around our menu for the week, we do that. Right. But that's also a good resource as well. But actually, you know, at this point, we really need uh, cash donations. Mm -hmm. So you've covered you've covered the food item end of it very well. It, it yes. sounds like between the donations and one thing and another. So, so how if someone does want to donate um, a cash to you, are you a five hundred one c three? Can they get a deduction for this? They can based on the the, the church is considered our official ah, sponsor. Okay. So we ha we receive a five hundred one c three by being under the church, mm -hmm. and people can go to North Country uh, Savings Bank. And you can actually go there and donate and just say it's for the snack pack program. Okay. You don't need to know any account information, just say mm -hmm. this is for the snack pack program. 
The other thing you can do is you can actually write a check out to the Potsdam Snack Pack Program. It's 200 Market Street, number 228, mm -hmm. Potsdam, New York, 13676. You can also send me an email, uh, pdamsnacks, P-D-A-M-S-N-A-C-K-S, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And so there are, a variety, there are a variety of ways of getting in touch with me. And I'll actually put all those in the show notes so that people won't have to be scrambling to okay. write this down. <laughs> Wonderful. So the big, um, the big step forward that you made this year is actually becoming a affiliated with the Central New York Food Bank and that's a based in Syracuse but it actually covers uh, the North Country in a, in a big chunk of New yes. York State. So yes. um, talk a little bit about how the process you went through to yes. become a, a food bank member. Yes. So when I reached out to the food bank initially and that was actually a referral uh, from a representative from Price Chopper because I had contacted their headquarters about getting a donation and so they did send me a donation. Thank you very much. <laughs> but then uh, their community person said, I think you should talk to this individual at the Food Bank of Central New York. So I reached out to the, to the Food Bank and they said, okay, here's the process. You're pretty new, so we need to wait at least six months and you need to demonstrate that your program is viable and that it can be sustained based on the donations, you have enough funds available, and you have people, there are people supporting it, so that you have volunteers um, that can sustain the program and you're not doing this as a one-person show, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell people, I treated this like a military operation, <laughs> wrote up the plan and, and said, okay, here's what I need to do. And we were able to, to submit all the proper paperwork they, uh, they sent a representative from the food bank uh, uh, here to do a site visit. Mm -hmm. That happened. I had to go to Syracuse to attend training. Completed that, have my little certificate. So once that was all in place, then I was allowed to start ordering uh, from the food bank. Mm -hmm. And everything is done online. So I've been able to place the first order, which was delivered on August 16th. And then I'll be preparing to submit another order sometime in October. This is a kind of a rough time of year for them because they have so many organizations that have grants that have to be used up between September and October. So a lot of product is flying off the shelves and they're, you know, they're catering to a particular niche market. Mm -hmm. So I, I, was, I was hoping to have a delivery for next week, but based on what's available, it's better for us to just wait until kind of all the other organizations get through their grant period, and then we'll look and see what's available. Because that also changes right. from week to week. Right. Well, I love the fact that you talk about treating this as a military operation in terms of organization and everything else, and you actually have a uniform for your yes. volunteers. So, yes. so let's show folks what, um, what the t-shirt looks like if you are a snack pack uh, uh, volunteer and those were donated by Great, Great Northern, Northern Printing. Printing. Randy yeah. and Kim. Randy uh, and Kim are wonderful. They've yes. done so much over the years for so many organizations. Yes. So this is really a, a community effort. Well, so the program is ready to grow and the one thing you probably need to make it grow is more people. So talk a little yes. bit about what the next steps are and how people can get involved who want to be part of this very exciting community effort. Yes, I, one of the things I would like to do, and this is on the list, the plan for, for this year, I'm definitely looking at getting grants from organizations, but I do know that because we are still new, it's, we're still less than a year old, that most of the like federal and state grants, they're looking for a track record. Mm -hmm. And most people that I've spoken to asking about a grant and what's available, they're saying, well, do you have like two years worth of data? Like, no, I don't. They said, well, what have you done so far? So I normally send them, you know, a, a PowerPoint slide presentation and some attachments, and they write back and say, you're on the right track, mm -hmm. good documentation, but we really need to see how this program looks, you know, maybe a, a year down the road. So one of the things that that a lot of the organizations are saying is that you have to show that you're collaborating with other groups. Mm -hmm. So for example, our, our work with Garden Share, mm -hmm. uh, Fidelis Care for example, when they gave us, they gave us not only 
uh, items for the snack pack, but they, they donated like dental, a dental coloring book, toothbrushes, and then at the end of the school year they gave us like a, a pencil kit, you know, with a ruler and different things like that. So they want to show how are you working with other organizations mm -hmm. to address the needs. So that, those uh, types of relationships are, are the things that I'm going to be focusing on this year. The other thing is looking at uh, establishing a board of directors. I've reached out to a few people. Of course, everyone's busy and, and doing so much. And we have a very caring community, and there are people who are so involved, and you know, they're they're pretty stretched in terms of their commitment. So I do have a couple of people who have said they would be interested in serving. I need to find a few more. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's interested in doing okay, that, okay. That so that's a great perfect. opportunity. Just as you, as a new member of the community, identified a need, maybe there are some new folks out there who've been looking for the right volunteer opportunity. Yes. This might be it. So yes. we'll make sure that all your contact information okay. is available, Laurel, okay. because we want, uh, we, you know, we want this to continue uh, because it is meeting a need that you've identified and. And this is not by any means the only snack pack program in the county. Lots of schools, Norwood Norfolk has yes. one, uh, Messina has one, and their communities are stepping up and volunteering and providing material and resources exactly as the Potsdam community yes. is doing here. Yes. So yes. Uh, this really is a, um, it's a wonderful showcase for what the North Country is all about, isn't yes. it? Yes, so, yes it is. And the other thing, the other big thing that I'm trying to do is get together with a few of the leaders to talk about making Potsdam a site for the Summer Food Service Program. Mm -hmm. So I've already reached out to the elementary school and talked to or contacted Bracia Falls because they do have, they are a sponsor. And I've communicated with the New York State Board of Education in terms of what would be the best way forward. So I'm, I'm just in the initial stages and we're looking at maybe having a meeting of, of several community leaders sometime in October to talk about that and the best way to put a program like that together. But we definitely want uh, Potsdam to be designated right. as a site and we can do that, uh, a, there are a variety of ways. It could be done through an enrichment program, let's say the church had an enrichment program that they ran during the summer, mm -hmm. then that site could be designated. I know they've used the rec center for some reason. I'm not sure why that it's not. It has not been designated as a mm -hmm. site, mm -hmm. but that those are the types of things we're going to be talking about, mm -hmm. so that we can increase um, not only the schools children who are getting the snacks, but other children in the community. That's right. That's because right. then it would be available to anyone 18 yeah. or under. Right. Well, and that's that's important to be thinking about um, that need and how to meet that need and. Uh, I appreciate so much you coming in and talking about this and the fact that General Laurel has motivated her <laughs> troops and has created this wonderful plan. So um, we, will, uh, we will be looking forward to seeing how you, you meet the, the needs this year and how you are able to expand and meet the additional needs in the community. Thank you so much for coming in, Laurel. Thank you again. Well, this has been great. It's, it's a wonderful program. I'm happy to support it. Yeah. These conversations are a production of North Country Matters, filmed here in the Potsdam Public Library's Fred W. Cleveland Computer Center. This show is a civic collaboration between the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, and the Potsdam Public Library. Until next time, remember, our North Country Matters. Well, thank you. That just, it's thank a wonderful you. program. I appreciate so much the work you're doing.